will be the best years of your life. That's my story. That was amazing. Thank you so much, Dr. George C. Fraser. Okay, so now what we're going to do, we're going to move over to the red carpet. We're going to have some more conversations with some of our honorees. And, um, you know, you guys just hang tight. Uh, let's network a little bit. We'll be right back over there. And um, if you all have any questions, yes, that way right there. Feel free to come right. Thank you. So we are going to start with Mrs. Angelise Echoes Brown back over there at the red carpet, please. Okay, how are you doing today? Angelise Eckler Brown, how are you doing? I am well. Thank you. How does it feel to be at this extraordinary event? How are you feeling today? This is incredible. I, I flew in from Los Angeles and I'm looking at, at this incredible, powerful, rich, beautiful people. My people, it just reminds me of something I. I tell my students, we are descendants of kings and queens who mastered math and sciences and languages. And I walk in and I am empowered. A southern country girl from Tennessee and Mississippi. But right now, you guys are making me feel like an absolute queen. Thank you. Excellent, excellent. So can you tell us some of the things that you're working on, some of the wonderful things you're working on right now? Um, we are presently, we are uh, empowering uh, a number of youth uh, nationwide. Our goal is to access 5,000 kids a month, where they'll have access to all sorts of resources, academic, emotional, and socially. Um, we have a book coming out talking about those wonderful individuals. And uh, I came to, to share a message for all of us, especially the educator, educators and scholars in the room, to let's continue to work and empower our youth and move them, not only locally but nationally, and embrace them and technology. So I'm excited to do that and be a part of that. My kids are talking a lot. That's wonderful. And finally, how can everyone support you? How can we support your efforts? You know, people are, are accustomed in a position like this. Um, people ask for money. I have had million dollar grants put in my hand. Half a million, 400,000. And you know what I've learned? If you really want to support my mission, go back into your communities and find a child. 
find a teenager, find a, a, a single mom, a dad raising babies, a grandma raising babies because that daughter is addicted and she's left three or four babies. Don't shun them. Extend your hand and your heart, your compassion. Grab them and pull them along with you and say, if I can get a Cornell, a Harvard, a Radcliffe, a degree, USC, Howard, so can you. And make them smile, soften their hearts, and just tell them how beautiful they are. If you want to support educating young minds, I challenge you to each of you to reach back and grab a child, and then email me or call me and say, Miss Echoes, I've got a 15 year old. You would make my day. Thank you so much. Thank you. We can take some pictures. Next, I would like to call up Dr. Bernard Fialkoff, please. Beautiful. Foundation for a Drug-Free World, the America's Chapter. How are you doing today, sir? So if you wouldn't mind taking a minute just to tell us about your organization and the work that you're doing, please. Sure. First of all, it's a pleasure to be with you, and I want to thank Dr. Takei, in fact, I wanted everyone to give a round of applause. So, the organization that I run is called the Foundation for a Drug-Free World. I have the America's Chapter. It's an international organization. It's in 160 countries, and our kids and our families are being destroyed. As a doctor of 40 years in New York City, I can tell you that the NIH and the CDC studies and the New England Journal of Medicine and the Journal of the American Medical Association all show that marijuana, vaping, is dangerous, harmful to pregnant mothers, to our kids. Now I'm here, my African American community by and large, uh, you wouldn't know it looking at me, but I'm Cuban. Y si yo no hablo en español, van a pensar que eso no es verdad, pero si yo soy cubano. So I wanted to just uh, really show you that. So what two communities are beset largely by this drug problem are the African American community and the Latin community, which I'm part of. And uh, so I want to let you know that the program is your program. It's not my program. It's free. There's absolutely no commercial interest, zero. If we lose our kids, we don't have anything left. And I'm a grandfather, I have two kids, my wife and I have four kids, and the last thing in the world I know any mother and father in this audience wants are their kids to die from drug abuse. So the program is yours, it's in 22 languages. Please use it however you want. It's called drugfitworld.org. It's yours. Use it. We need to use it because otherwise we won't have a happy world and we won't have a future. It's very, very important. I want to give you one last thing and then if you have a question, that's fine. And I want to thank you for giving me the time. I told this nice man, I said, uh, it's a sin if I don't get a chance to let these leaders have this program. If I was in a war, like this guy, see here, I'd give him a gun and I know that he'd shoot people to make sure that I live. But what I want to do is not to shoot anybody. I believe education is the key. I think that every human being has goodness inside of them. So I want to leave off on one thing. I want to ask you and ask you to participate. How many mothers in the world want their kids on drugs? 
Love, loudly. None, right? Would you all agree? Okay, this is very important. Now, how many fathers in the world want their kids on drugs? Zero. Exactly. Now, why did I bring that statistic up? Very simple. Just like you see here, and I know you feel it between all of us. With this, we achieve unity. Unity. When we achieve unity, we can see who's been benefiting from the conflict that's been created for eons. There is no problem of mankind. We love each other. There's a problem of a very few who have tremendous power who have generated conflict. Where's Paul Williams? Where's Mr. Williams? Please come over here. Mr. Williams is national handball champion from New York. He's part of our group. And I want to bring him up here because you know, he has a trophy store, and I'm a surgeon in New York for 40 years. And my office is like the UN. So I've always used him, and he and I were talking, and we started to work on helping kids. So I think the best thing is to show by example, there is no problem. And uh, Dr. Hong, can I have you up here? Dr. Hong came all the way from Taiwan, and he runs a very important group. That's called Full Pal. The foundation for Full Pal Foundation, and Tai Chi Wen in the Full Pal, and in Brisbane. Right, all over the world. And then my friend from Haiti, that I want to call out Sanan, Hugh Sanan, Haiti has been used for centuries to rob its gold, to rob its people. I want to make it clear. I know Dr. Decay is a strong man, and that's why I want to use this platform. We need to stop what's going on in Haiti because it's being robbed. And the reason you see what's going on in Haiti is to cause a distraction. Mm -hmm. And when you cause a distraction, you can rob, and everything seems okay, but there are people suffering. So that's what I wanted to leave you on. The foundation for a drug-free world is free, there is no commercial interest, there's a humanity interest for all human beings on this planet. We're all different, and that's what's beautiful. Because we have all something to give. I'm so honored to be here with you. Uh, please, the program is yours. If you want to speak to me tonight, by all means, you can speak to them. We just had something at the Westin where we honored you know, Dr. Decay, Dr. Alawali, and many different leaders. But the program is for you, trust me, if we use the program in 22 languages and we safeguard our families, we will have religious freedom. If we put the women back in charge, yeah. mm -hmm. if we safeguard the families as men, we safeguard our families and we allow our women to lead, there will never be another problem in this world because I know how strong I'm very afraid of my wife. <laughs> So I want to thank you for your attention. Uh, use the program. Let's make a happy world like Dr. Hong wants to do. By all means, speak to this man. He's a tremendous humanitarian. This guy is, wants to do inner city handball and, and, and get so that African American kids and Latin kids and all kids get together. Bobby Hunter is somewhere in here. I don't know where he is. He's a globetrotter. We've been doing events with Mayor Ford who runs a mayor's group all over the world, and that's what we're doing. I I've gone way over. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much. Can we get some photos really quickly with these gentlemen right here?
Next, I would like to call up Mr. Roger Gore. My name is Roger Gore and I own G Natural Spirits and G Natural Products. And my business is in the personal hygiene, cosmetics. And when I look around this room today, I'm so honored to see so many beautiful people looking beautiful, beautiful inside as well as outside. And when I listen to our previous speakers, we're all on the same page here. And that's to me, it was the power of this event. I've been successful in creating award-winning brands that are sold in Giants, Walmart, as well as Spirits that are sold in Total Wines and places like that. But I can't help but think as I was raised that it says, what is there to gain the world and lose your soul? And my soul is my villages and my people. So from my success, from my journey, I created an opera club for men to become an advocate for children that have autism, as well as an advocate for caregivers. It's both ends of the spectrum. When we look at it, how many children that have autism, the world says, be lucky if you just graduate high school. And then we walk away from it. When they get to college, college is not designed. It's very ancient when it comes to disability act. It focuses on sight, hearing, and mobility. We have what you call an IEP program that's been incredibly successful. And that program should travel two years into every college for every child that has autism that graduates high school. But no one's speaking up. And I've been dealing with governors, I'm supporting a governor now, and I'm trying to get this on the table because why? These kids are geniuses. They learn differently, they see things differently, and that's why so many companies are going after them. But we have to expand support for them. My youngest son, Reuben, Reuben, come up here for a second. Here, I'll bring him up. Reuben, can you come up front with your dad for a second? I'm going I'm to finish after that because I know you're running behind, but I just wanted to come up. Reuben, can you come up with your dad for a second? I became an advocate because my youngest son, Reuben, the elder by Reuben, Ruben was a level eight autism, and he has autism. And in my heart, I know he's beat. And Ruben was written off like so many other children. But as a parent, I decided that, well, we're not going to write him off. We're going to get intentional. Ruben received a president award for academic achievement in the sixth grade. <laughs> President Obama. And then he received another President Academic Achievement Award from President Obama in the eighth grade. And then, thank you. And then he went on to receive another Academic Achievement Award from President Trump in the twelfth grade. Okay. Ruben also received an award from Governor Hogan in the state of Maryland for finishing in the top 5% of the students in the state of Maryland. And they received a scholarship to go to George Washington University, and they gave him $60,000 to attend school. Wow. In GW, they have what you call, just like every college, a Disability Act program or service department. And that department is not designed to deal with kids that have any traces left or any different challenges of autism. And my inspiration comes from my son. But my son understands that we both talk about it. It's not about us. It's about other children that we don't even know. So in that conversation, I share with him, our business is successful. I'm proud. I'm blessed for that. But what is there to gain the world? 
and lose your soul. Mm -hmm. And we stay focused on our soul. And thank you all tonight. <laughs> Thank you so much. Once again, a round of applause for Mr. Roger Gore and his son. Okay, next, I would like to call up Dr. Manny Ahome. Hello, how are we doing today, sir? Well, uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Emmanuel Ahome. My friends call me Manny. Uh, you can tell from my accent, I'm not from Washington, D.C. I'm from Lagos, Nigeria. At the age of nine, I was selling water. Okay, go ahead. At the age of nine, I was selling water and soft drinks at a park in Lagos, Nigeria, when this group of missionaries came to teach African children how to play sports. I showed up that day to go sell water, and I realized I was about to have a day with destiny. I put my basket of water down, and these people came to teach African children how to play basketball. They were dribbling ball, playing ball, having fun. I showed up on a journey, they shooed me away because I was a street kid. And all of a sudden, one of the balls went around the corner, I quickly grabbed it and I snuck and I joined. And this missionary from the great state of Wisconsin said we're gonna have a shooting competition, and they said the price of the winner is gonna be with your shoes. I never played basketball in my life, but I did, I showed that truth, when it, and I became the first person not just in my family, but my entire community to own a pair of tennis shoes. I was so excited, I ran so fast home, I forgot my basket of water. And I showed up at home, and I looked at me, and said, where's my water? I said, mama, check out my shoes. And she was so happy for me. And I started playing basketball. Eventually, I got a basketball scholarship to go to the United States. I ended up at the University of North Dakota in Lake Ridge. And my friend looked at me and said, what's this African boy doing in North Dakota? But it's crazy because of some of the choices that happened in my country. My father ended up getting sick and passed away. I had to go back to Africa to go bury my dad. And that's when I learned there was over 300 million kids that didn't have shoes that wake up in Africa. Over a billion of them are infected with salt, transmitted viruses and infection because they have no shoes. And many of them can go to school. So it took me about you know, a number of years after getting in the technology business, living my life, and my wife and I was here today. Uh, we, I was blessed to meet in North Dakota. Uh, we started this organization 19 years ago called Samaritan Speak. With a vision to put shoes to feet of 10 million people all over the world. And in the last 19 years, we served over 9.1 million people in over 109 countries around the world. And I'm here to tell you today because of that inspiration of that man that gave me a pair of shoes. About six years ago, we invented a world shoe, the first of this kind of the world, that has an active antimicrobial that is biodegradable to help us stop the spread of neglected tropical disease that affects kids that come to the team. Mm -hmm. And we've now served kids not just across the world, but also here in the United States, because shoes is one of the top three needs for kids to go to school. So we serve paddle on schools across the United States, over, I think, over 45 states, over 109 countries. And it's an amazing thing about over 560 U.S. communities. And if you ever watch ESPN and see coaches that coach basketball on the sidelines, they do it for Samaritan speed. So the reason why I stand before you today is because one man came to Africa to ignite the passionate hearts of kids. To tell me to be able to dream because the God of me was to have a plan for my life. And not just the fact that we're going to serve our 10 million person next year, but God will in the next year, we're going to actually establish our first manufacturing facility in the country of God. So, God Thank you so much for having me. God bless you, God. Wow, round of applause. We have some extraordinary individuals here today. Wow. Um, next, I would like to call up Bishop Dr. Paul Naya. Bishop Dr. Paul Naya. Good evening, everybody. I am glad to be here today. I did not manufacture anything, <laughs> but I gave life to the lifeless. I gave life to the hopeless. I am here to celebrate the 32 years of leaving my family, my home, just like Abraham, to go to the place that nobody wanted to go to. And that place was the nation of Togo, a small little West African nation. That several years ago, the gospel was not to be preached. And I have to get with others did not want to dare to. Nine times been arrested, several times been threatened, 
or wish to. But to the glory of God today, the gospel is all over the land that was like a forsaken place. So I stand here to make everybody listen to me, to know that you cannot walk for God. You cannot labor in vain. I'm leaving my family, leaving my friends, leaving my country. I'm originally from Nigeria. Not that I wasn't educated. My first degree was in engineering, second degree in accountancy. But I left all to get into the bush and do the work of the gospel. Our ministry is called Go Fetch Them Ministry. We reach out to the unreached, raise up children that were in the streets. I raise up widow like my mom was a widow for 40 something years that I know her. And so we have a widow program and we take care of the widow. I'm grateful to God today I dedicate this privilege unto the Lord. For people like my daughter there, Catherine from Togo, who came through our Bible school, a place that was voodoo, invested place. But we raise up people. Today she is now with her husband, pastoring a church in the U.S. of A. I want to thank the Lord for this opportunity. The Bible says the race is not for the swift, nor the battle for the strong, nor food for the wise. But it's a time and chance happen to them all. I stand here as a privileged, opportune, chance, child of a God. That from that village, I can be recognized out here. So I give God all the glory. God bless you. Your Royal Majesty is here, so we're going to take a moment for him to enter.
Shall we please be seated? On behalf of the Council, the Conference of uh, the Caribbean and African Faith Based Leadership Conference, we want to welcome the King of the Zanzule Kingdom of Ghana. We want to thank God for his life. He's made uh, his way all the way from his kingdom and he has a delegation that he's come with. We want to interview him briefly about his work in Ghana and all over the world. His Majesty, we are honored to have you. You are welcome, sir. We would like to know as an organization and uh, Children of yours in the diaspora, we would like to know what you have been doing all over the world uh, for your kingdom and uh, for all, all, all of us. And we are thankful for your life. So please briefly give us a synopsis of what you have been doing all over the world. Yes. Thank you so much. I couldn't speak without it. My voice is not amplified in English. Good evening, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. It's always a welcome and, and uh, I feel so elated, particularly when I meet persons of African descent here in America or all over the world. What it is is that Africa will continue to be our great. For us, we are not resting until you all find feedback home. Yes. Because that is your root. And the root at the end of every tree is the root. That is where you are. The African in the diaspora, the call for you all to come back home is one that is so close to my heart. And therefore, even in Ghana, the president and the people of Ghana, the leadership of Ghana, put as, as, as community leaders, if you ask, I would say leadership is one of service. We are in this privileged position to serve our people. And in any way possible that we can give you the best of service and affect your livelihood. That is when we can lift up our heads and clouds. Ethical leadership is what Africa is. And that is the my call. That we would continue to give this ethical leadership and preach this ethical leadership. Conferences like this is a very good and important platform to reach out to African leaders that are the positions they have is to give to the people, is to say, is to make to make Africa great and strong and let Africa take its place in the world. And this is what we need to understand. That we would always thrive in unity. And that is why it is important for us to be united at the love front. Be masters of our own destiny. The Caribbean is an extension of Africa. You are weak here because Africa is weak. Until Africa becomes strong, and you are the only person who can empower Africa back home to be strong. And therefore, if Africa assumes a position where we can also sanction America when they do wrong to our people, marginalize them, inequalities, then the world will be happy. This is the challenge for all of you. Let us make Africa strong to be able to protect all the sons and daughters. Thank you. Thank you. Shall we put our hands together for His Majesty? And we stand up. Oh, yes. Shall we please be on our feet one more time? Even as we welcome the president of the conference of the Caribbean African Faith-Based Leadership, Dr. Agoron Pique. Shall we please welcome him? Yes. Good to see you. We thank God. His Majesty has summarized his work in Africa and what would like us to do. So we thank God for his life. We're going to excuse him.
so that he will get we'll be hearing more from him yes we'll be hearing more from him in the course of the program but please the pleasure is mine to welcome to speak to us briefly dr agorom Dike. Good evening, everyone. It's indeed a joy to see all you distinguished ladies and gentlemen. We are in for a time of greatness. It is indeed an honor to have with us His Royal Majesty and the other members of the Royal Team here to be with us on this, our 2022 African and Caribbean International Leadership Conference which is hosted by the Caribbean and African Faith-Based Leadership Conference. Your Majesty, we hope you have been enjoying your visit here in the United States by our hospitality team, and we look forward to engaging you further. This is the third time we have hosted one of our traditional rulers or royal fathers from Africa. We had with us the only of Ike in Yoruba land, Nigeria, in 2016. We had with us His Royal Majesty, Isan, um, the King of the Yoruba Kingdom, Zanika Ikechuku. He was here with us December. And it's indeed a joy to have our Royal Father, King of the Zanzule Kingdom, as we are very happy to accept and acknowledge the openness of Ghana to the world, the openness of Ghana to the African diaspora to engage. And in many conversations with His Majesty, not only the fact that he is intellectually astute in terms of law and policy and civic engagement, but he's a man that is very passionate about diaspora engagement and the need for the African-American Caribbean community to come home and engage the motherland. So put your hands together for His Royal Majesty. We are really happy that you are gracious with your, your presence here. You are indeed our highest guest of honor. He has been brought here to be the honorary, the chief honorary host and chairman of this evening's event. And we are truly joyful for the sacrifices you have made. We are looking forward to the great musical production of our African traditional music with vibration this evening, sponsored by His Royal Majesty. And we are looking forward to hear your beautiful words. Many African Americans and Caribbeans have been doing their ancestry to find out where they are from. And I remember Born in the island of Jamaica, after my dad died, I was maybe about 14 and there was a disengagement of ever possible having the chance to engage my family in Africa. And at that time, I was like in foster home. But God has made it possible for me not to go through the route of ancestry, but to reconnect with my African family and to go to Urala, Amanata Urala, Uswakoli. Am I And I was able to host my royal father yes. of Urala Kingdom in December. So I never had to go through the ancestry process to know that I am a Caribbean Igbo. Yes. <laughs> or an Igbo Caribbean. And so this evening is an opportunity for those of you who have done your ancestry or waiting to do it, but you have the chance to engage with our royal father. And this is indeed great for us. I want to use this opportunity to congratulate all the individuals who have been invited from all over Africa, the Caribbean, and numerous states from the United States to be recognized with three categories of awards that will be presented this evening the Global Humanitarian Leadership Award, which is given to individuals that have demonstrated a deep sense of sincerity and passion, but serves on a national and international level with a great body of work 
and those are the hardest honorees to be approved by our committee and we want to congratulate all our global humanitarian honorees. This evening, the conference has created a new category of award because we are engaging in royalty. And in this conference, we will be presenting the Royal Leadership Award for the very first time, and that will go to our honorary host, His Royal Majesty, our King of the Zanzule Kingdom. We want to also congratulate others who will be receiving the International Distinguished Leadership Award for your international work in either philanthropy, human rights, civic engagement, or economic development. We want to congratulate those in that category. We also want to congratulate 100 individuals who will be receiving the United States President's Lifetime Achievement Award. Yeah. This is the highest civic award that a citizen of the United States can receive signed by the President of the United States for your voluntary service and your resilient hard work in community development. Put your hands together for our Presidential Lifetime Honoring. The White House offers four categories of award. We have the bronze, the silver, the gold. But the lifetime is the highest award you can ever achieve. It is not easy for young people to get that award. <laughs> lifetime honorees, we want to congratulate you. I must say this morning we had a robust conference. This year our theme is united in faith for social change. If there's not another time we need to have social change in our communities is now. We are still battling with religious extremism and administrative terrorism and religious wars and civil wars in continental Africa. We are still battling with gang violence in the Caribbean region and some of it seems to be politically associated or affiliated. And we are concerned that some of our Caribbean leaders may not have enough political will to deal with that problem. We are still concerned about governance in Africa. We are still concerned about the tribal violence. It is time for us to look beyond tribalism, to look beyond race, to look beyond religion and realize that we are one people with one common destiny. We want to congratulate you here because one of the things that you have made possible is to prove to the world that African and Caribbean people can unite. I rephrase it. We are proving to the world that African, Caribbean, and African Americans can unite as one multicultural black community, knowing that our heritage and our roots is in continental Africa. We are very happy for our faith-based leaders who have traveled from Sierra Leone, Uganda, South Africa, Nigeria, and Ghana to be honored. And we invite the press to remain to record the stories of these royal religious fathers who are not only impacting the domestic and national landscape of your nation, but they are people of great global influence. Mm -hmm. And we in the diaspora look up to our fathers, whether royal, religious, or our village father, for their prayers and their guidance as we fight together to achieve greatness as the people of Africa living in these United States of America. 
We want to acknowledge as well that we are grateful for the United States of America and its Second Amendment, Religious Freedom, which is the 18th Amendment of the United Nations. Because we struggle in our countries, depending on geographical location, to express ourselves as a religious people. But the United States of America Second Amendment and the 18th Amendment of the United Nations give us the right to worship or the right not to worship. And irrespective of our religion, whether Christian, Muslim, Baha'i, Confucianist, Buddhist, or African or Caribbean indigenous religions, we have the freedom in this country to practice our religion and live our lives as one common people. Yeah. We are also yearning for racial equality in this country. Yeah. Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King says that 11 o'clock on a Sunday morning is the most divided hour in America. Yeah. We work together in different places, but we need to unite when it comes to worship, in the fight for social justice, we need to unite in the fight for immigration reform. We cannot allow Congress and the White House to believe that we are not concerned about the 11 million people undocumented living in the shadows with approximately 1.5 to 2 million of them being from the African and Caribbean community. We have to unite and be that voice. We have to unite with those that are of the Spanish, the Haitian, and the other, in, the other immigrant groups in the United States. Because we want immigration reform. Someone says that you have a time for human rights, for civil rights, for religious rights, yeah. for gay rights. Yeah. May you join with me and say, now is the time. Now, now is, is the time. time for immigrant rights. For immigrant, immigrant rights. rights. Another thing I want to point out is the fact, and we are grateful to the United States government, that we are celebrating Haitian American Heritage Month, Jewish American Heritage Month, Caribbean American Heritage Month, and even Black History Month. But within the United States, we have thousands and millions of people that speak a foreign language, that comes from a different village, that are high achievers in the STEM, science, math, technology, engineer. We produce the highest numbers of black medical professionals and PhDs in the STEM from any university across the United States. But it is unfortunate that one, of the con that one of the areas that is not celebrated is African Heritage Month. Yes. Now we have several states and counties have legalized African Heritage Month, but we are calling upon the White House, we are calling upon Congress sure. to partner with us leaders of the African diaspora yes. and make September African Heritage Month in the United States of America. We want to have a month where our presence can be celebrated. We are in this country over 400 years in the United States. We have recently elected our first black female judge in Prince George's County, Judge April Adeyemi. But we are not only advocating for justice, for unity, for partnerships, but we want our renaissance, our achievements, our contribution to diversity, yes. our contribution to economic development. Yes. The African community in the United States of America has one of the highest numbers of black registered nonprofit organizations among the highest number of registered indigenous townships registered for missions and charities in their nations. A resilient people, highest numbers of nurses and doctors. And you know what? We are one of the fastest growing population of faith-based organizations yes. representing the strongest churches in the United States of America. Our renaissance deserves to be celebrated. Yes. I close by saying this, 
what is this evening about? Yes. This evening is about the celebration of excellence. Yes. We are celebrating not only those that have impacted the lives of others by demonstrating sincerity and solidarity in helping and loving the neighbor as themselves. We are not only celebrating the demonstration of love and compassion for the marginalized, the, 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 those that are oppressed and depressed, but we are celebrating the impact of those who also serve Africa, our Chinese, Caucasians, and others, who have also partnered in the development of the continent of Africa and the Caribbean. And these awards, and we want to thank the White House because it takes like 15 working days to produce these awards, and they have been producing them in two to three days because they value what we do. Yes. And we want to thank the Biden administration for all the support and the cooperation yes. in allowing the descendants of slaves that came here 400 years ago in shackles. Yes. And some have come of your free will as students, as workers, yes. to be able to celebrate that I yes. have been a recipient of the United States President Lifetime Achievement Award. It is a monumental legacy for all of you because in years to come, yes. your children and your grandchildren will look back and say mm -hmm. that my grandmother yes. and my grandfather yes. was honored by the United States of America. Yes. We are happy yes. to have you with us. In our conference, we focus on two main, several major topics. Social and economic development. And we looked at mission partnerships, how we can work together. Yes. And we look forward to have you invite the press to stay with us and to celebrate. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming. And I hope that these words will inspire you as we will rise up and live up to our God-given calling, irrespective of your religion, irrespective of your race, irrespective of your class, and irrespective of your culture. Never forget that we are one people with one common destiny. God bless you. Okay, so again, round of applause for Dr. Aguam D.K. Founder and President of the Caribbean and African Faith Based Leadership Conference. He spoke so eloquently, and you can't help but to be inspired at in an event like this. And once again, let's give a round of applause for the Royal Majesty. Okay, and now uh, we are going to go back there for our reception. We're going to network, and we're going to enjoy ourselves. Thank you very much. And there will be additional opportunities for interviews and things of that nature as well. So feel free to join me. It's a very short and down now. We're going to that other place. Yeah. Excuse me, everyone. We have to clear the way for His Royal Majesty to walk through. So we'll walk in and clear some space, please. Right over here.
Even Bob, yeah. and congratulations for this uh, life, lifetime award from the President of the United States of America. So I wish to ask you, how can you say about this great day? It's a very great day. Very great. I'm very happy because uh, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. Oh, some people don't live up to see uh, this day in their life. Uh, I want to thank God for making me a fortunate one to be receiving the president, U.S. President Lifetime Achievement Award. And this is because of my uh, career and profession in the mental health and psychiatry. Uh, when I was doing my work, I never knew that people were taking stock of all what was being done. And today is the result of a good work having been done that has come to the recognition of the President of the United States. I'm so glad about that. And I've come out here to uh, encourage also all young people, especially in the domain of mental health and psychiatry, and those who have been so discouraged in pursuing this career career on that path, 
to learn from my example and pursue something uh, which is related to this career because it's something to save a lot of lives. It's something that helps humanity. So I want to salute uh, first the President Joe Biden for singling me out of a whole lot of people. You know, out of 100 uh, recipients of this award worldwide, I'm glad that I'm coming out from Cameroon. Uh, I think I should be the other one when there are two of us from Cameroon who have been singled out for this uh, United States President Lifetime Achievement Award. Um, without much ado, we have to keep other people's space so that they can use the red carpet as well. So we'll come back to, to more conversations after this. Thank you. Thank you very much, Doctor. Thank you. Honorable Doctor, good Thank I you. I claim it in Jesus' name. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Okay.
up to David Jackson. Those in front of the podium, can you step back a little bit just for a few minutes, please? Thank you very, very much. We do have an amazing package prepared for you. And I'm sure you are ready to join what is laid in store for you tonight. This is a big night. Can we have some silence, please, just for a few minutes? Please. I want to open by saying that if you are an African or Caribbean person or an African American, that the best place to be during this CBC week is right here at the press club. We have with us to be our MC, the CEO of New Life, New York City, Reverend Dr. David E. Jackson, a preacher, one deeply engaged in humanitarian work, civic engagement, with many travels to Africa, an intellectually astute, high achiever in our African American community. We have also invited one of our young man who is a Star Wars musician, Hexy, who has prepared great music for us, in addition to music provided by His Royal Majesty. I will now hand over to continue this segment of the forum. Making welcome with a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, Reverend Dr. David E. Jackson. Good evening to you. Grace and peace be unto you, God our Father, and as our Lord Jesus Christ, good evening to you. It is an honor to stand before you this evening and thank you for taking time out of your schedule to join us for this auspicious occasion. We have tremendous international and national leaders who have joined us, and we want to give high notes to our King, His Majesty, who is here with us, to our ambassador, who is here with us. Can we give a round of applause for these amazing dignitaries who are here with us Certainly, we want to give thanks to Dr. Agron DK for his tremendous leadership of the Caribbean and African faith-based leadership conference. Can we give him a round of applause? I hope that you have had a chance to network and meet people. The beauty of being a pan-African community is that we network one with another. We cannot do this work. Can I please have your attention? Can I kindly have your attention, please? I went with young people among us, so I just talk. I learned to talk over noise. It doesn't bother me. But I want to encourage you tonight to please take advantage of the people that's in the room. We cannot uplift our people by ourselves. We must work together. We are not competitors. We are brothers and we are sisters. So please greet your brothers and your sisters tonight. Exchange information and find ways that we can partner together to make a greater impact in our nation and in our world. I would like to take a few minutes again to acknowledge some special VIPs who have been faithful and continuous contributors to this conference. Ambassador Sonia M. Johnny Esquire, Prophet Dr. Kofi Danso, Angelus Echoes Brown, President Ron Busby Sr., Gabriel Christian, and Michael B. Can we give them a loud round of applause for their support and sponsorship of this evening? Right at this time, please continue to enjoy. We'll let you know when it's time to go into the gala. It won't be on the now. So continue to network. Please meet people that you do not know. Exchange information. Have some drinks. Have some adorns. And enjoy yourself. Again, welcome to our gala awards tonight. Thank you so much. Where? Uh, you're not here to see 